गुड आफ्टरनून फ्रेंड्स इन माय लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन इन्वेस्टमेंट डिसीजन इन द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ पर्सनल फाइनेंशियल प्लानिंग इन माय प्रीवियस लेक्चर आई टॉक्ड अबाउट इन्वेस्टमेंट डिसीजन प्रोसेस एंड इन दिस लेक्चर आई बी टॉकिंग अबाउट डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट्स डिफरेंट फाइनेंशियल एसेट्स एंड रियल एसेट्स इन विच यू कैन मेक योर इन्वेस्टमेंट्स एंड आई विल बी टॉकिंग the merits and demerits when i use the word merit and demerit it means what are the different aspects which you will consider while making investment in that asset class right so i'll be talking in detail about that and i when i was talking about in my previous lecture on the investment decision process i said you make a list of the securities where you can invest when i say you construct the different securities in which the investment can be made depending on your risk depending on your return which you are expecting depending on your time horizon depending on your objective and so on so in income group you decide so what are these different type of security let's talk one by one to start with i'll say equity traditionally in india mostly people do used to invest in gold which is also a good investment and um, real estate we always argue that our women at home they are very smart in the sense that they they have been traditionally investing in gold and gold over a period of time in india has given good return whether this process whether this phenomenon will continue it's a billion dollar question so the point there are different assets we must know that which are the different assets which are available but gradually over a period of time instead of the 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 traditional investment avenue which were available for indian investors like gold real estate and and bank fd the interest in the equity market interest in the stocks is also rising why it is so equity you know equity is a it is share in a company in the company's capital right so the good thing about the equity is even if you have 500 rupees you can invest because you can buy any number of shares with the advent of national stock exchange right and the we have two stock exchanges in the country nsc and bsc right so whatever the even you can buy one share there was a time that used to be a lot that at least 100 shares 50 shares this was a lot in which the shares used to be purchased and sold at present even if you buy a one share two share three share any number of share you can buy of any company so what i'm trying to say that even you have a very small amount of investable funds even that can be parked into equity right and what is equity i said it is nothing but a portion of cap a small portion of the capital of the company it is a ownership of a company right and the fraction a small fraction the whole capital of a company is divided in small parts and each part is called share right so it is being listed in if it is being listed in the company you can have a demat account the only prerequisite you must have a demat account and i have talked in my earlier lectures how the demat account is being opened so if you have a depository account and then and you can buy the share from the stock market through some broker and what is good thing about the equity is that as i said it is a small amount in which you can invest and there are two benefits which you get out of it there can be a dividend income i'm using word can be i'm not saying will be because the if the company makes profit it distributes dividend unlike the bond i'll be talking later on in the bond there is no fixed liability on the part of the company to pay dividend if it makes profit if gives dividend more profit the company makes the more is the normally dividend which the company give to its shareholders right so it is you, the income which you generate by investing in share is in two form one is that in the dividend form and the other is in capital appreciation form because as the company progresses the price of the share also keeps on increasing in the stock market supposing i buy a share of a company say abc limited at the rate of rupees 100 right so 100 rupees of investment which i am making i am buying one share it can give me a dividend income on a regular basis if the company is making profit any company makes good profits then not only i get dividend but the price of the share in the stock market also rises so when i will sell it i'll get capital appreciation 
So, I am getting two income, one is the regular income in form of dividend. Suppose I keep the share of this company for 10 years. So, if it is a regularly profit making company and distributing dividend for 10 years, I will be getting a good sum of money as a, as a dividend income. And when I will be selling the share, I will get a profit that is capital 100 rupee share becomes say 500 rupees. Right? So, I am making a profit of 400 rupees in these 10 years means my, my income has my, my investment has become from 100 to 500. So, the, in two forms I get income. Investors express double digit returns high return in the long run. See, it may give you high return, it may give you less return because over a period of time the, the empirical evidences proves it that if you take a longer horizon, a longer period of time, then equity gives you the double digit in return. Means that it can, it is, it is a ability to beat inflation because you always argue that you want to make investment in, in such an asset which can beat inflation. Because we are a student of commerce and economics, we know it that if the return on investment does not beat inflation rate then your value of money, your capital in real terms decreases. I hope you are getting my point. What I am saying is, arguing is that suppose you invest 100 rupees and in a country if the inflation takes place at rate of 7 percent, right. So, after one year, the value of this 100 rupee will become lesser by 7 percent because the inflation has taken place 7 percent. So, the value of money as inflation and value of money, value of money means purchasing power of money has an opposite relationship. If this investment gives you, suppose you make a bank FD which gives you 6 percent return and inflation in the country is taking place at the rate of 7 percent per annum. So, what you are really getting? You are rather, you are depreciating your capital. Your capital is not appreciating, your capital is rather depreciating. So, in favor of the equity, we always argue that it has the ability to beat the return. And why we say that it has the ability to beat the return? In the longer run, mind it, I am not talking of the short run. In one year, two year, it may fall also. But over a longer period of time, an equity as a class can give you a return which is double digit, double digit means 10 percent or more and it can beat inflation. So, this is a very good thing about the equity. And since it gives you good return, we always argue it gives you high return. So, is the risk. Risk is also high. That is why many people who are who are risk averse people would not like to invest in equity because the element of risk is high. Just I was talking of that the, it gives you high return, it gives you 100 rupee share will become 500. But at the same time, in the same line, I will say 100 rupee share can also become 10 rupee, right? So, it can appreciate, it can depreciate also. We say, so while investing in the equity, you must be ready to face the risk associated with it. That is, your, your value of your security, value of your equity, may value of your share may fall also, right? So, the, there is a variability of return. It may be very high, it may be very low, it may be negative also. But if you generalize it, that is why while we talking about the investment decision process, I said constructive portfolio. When I use the word portfolio, if I talk in terms of, if suppose all my investment is in equity market only, in my stocks only. So, I will not buy the com one company share, I will buy many companies. If one company is not able to perform well, the other company may perform well. So, overall my risk will be diversified and I will get reasonably good return which can beat inflation, which can give me double digit return. So, this is about equity that is basically you have to keep in mind that equity can give you a very high return, but at the same time it is also risky assets. That is why many people in India especially who are, who are not ready to take risk, they do not prefer to invest in equity, they prefer to invest in bonds or other assets class which can give them fixed return because of the variability of return. The other asset class is bonds and debentures. Bonds and debentures are two terms which are used interchangeably in India especially when the, when the um, for bonds we use for government security, debentures we use for the um, private companies, private means public limited companies, fixed securities we use the word debenture. So, what this bond is? It is not the ownership, 
equity is the ownership of a company bond is a is a liability on the part of the company the company promises to pay a fixed sum of money after a period of time and during the period it will give a fixed rate of return that is in form of interest the return which we get in equity we call it dividend but the return which we get in bond we call it interest right so when a company issues the bonds it gives it promises to give a fixed rate of return that is say a company is issuing 100 rupee bond at the 8% it means company promises that 8% rate of interest it will be giving to the bond holder and normally in india each bond is of 100 rupee denomination so if i invest 1 lakh rupees it means i'll be getting if the rate of return rate of interest the company promises is 8% i'll be getting return at the rate of 8% right so it is a it is a fixed liability on the part of the company and it's a fixed return which the investor expect but normally this return is more than the return on bank fd or the because if i say if the bank is offering 6% 7% rate of interest if the bond also if the company is also offer 6 or 7% return probably people may not like to invest because they will say better we will invest in the bank fd right or better will deposit the money in the bank in the in the post office which will give us 6% return so certainly the rate of return in the bonds or the ventures is higher as compared to other fixed income securities like bank fd like deposits in the uh, post office like national savings certificate all right so these type of securities which gives fixed rate of return but these securities have low risk as compared to the equity market right because the chances of default of the company is less that's why even within the bonds people like to prefer the bonds of such companies which have been issued by highly rated companies these days we have various various credit rating agency you must have heard the name of icra care crisil i mean these are the various indian um, credit rating agencies which are operating in india and they they rate the bonds on the base of their risk profile on the base of their balance sheet on the base of the profits that these companies generate there are various parameters on the base of on the base of which the rate the bonds the higher is the rating normally lesser is the risky less less is the risk involved in investing in that bond right so we say that the chances of default is minimum if providedly you invest in the bonds of such companies or which are highly rated or if you are investing in the government bonds the bonds issued by the rbi rbi also issued government bonds on behalf of the government of india they are they are considered to be 100% safe right so these are mostly secured and suitable for risk averse investors within the bond also there are two types of bond which is called secured bond and unsecured bond just to give you an idea about this secured bonds are those <coughs> which are issued against hypothecating some of the assets of the company the assets remain within the company but company issued these bonds means suppose the company has issued bonds worth 1000 crore rupees right so 1000 crore means uh, each bond is of 100 cro- 100 rupees so 1000 crore divided by 100 that will be the number of bonds that will be issued by the company but the assets of 1000 crore rupees worth of assets company will say that these bonds are issued against these assets supposing the company fails to pay the liability that is after 7 years if the bond has been issued after for 7 years after 7 years the company has to pay the money back at that time the company doesn't have the cash flow the bond holders have a right to dispose of obviously through legal process to dispose of that asset and get their money back right so these are called secured bond unsecured bonds means no no particular asset is being set aside against against which the the bonds are being issued so mostly these bonds are secured and they are suitable for those investors who are not ready to take um, higher degree of risk unlike equity as i said it can become 10 times it can be become 1/10th also right so but in the bonds the uh, the probability of the failing of the company to pay its liability is low Providedly, if you invest in good companies' bonds or the government bonds, treasury bills. 
this is the most secure treasury bills are the bills securities financial assets that are being issued by the government of india obviously when i use the word government of india on on rbi basically issues on behalf of the government of india so treasury bill is one such example treasury bills are the instruments which are issued by rbi on behalf of the central government to meet short term requirements of funds less than one year <coughs> suppose you have some disposable i mean you your funds you you have 1 lakh rupees out of which you saved 80000 rupees and you you want to park some money of 20000 rupees which you have saved for for a shorter period of time for 6 months or for a year right so you can buy the treasury bills we you knowing it well that these are 100% safe but the government of india normally gives lesser rate of interest as compared to the private bonds or as compared to the debentures issued by the companies right so these treasury bills are of shorter duration they may be for 6 months that may be for 3 months if you have some surplusable funds and which you want to park for a very short period of time right you are want you are planning to buy a house you are looking for a house and say you are looking for a house for which you have saved over a period of time 1.5 crore rupees and which is there in the bank which is not saving bank and you have to invest you are looking for a house it the the decision of buying a house may take 2 months 3 months 6 months like that so what you are doing is instead of keeping the money idle you can keep it in the bank or you can buy the treasury bills these these treasury will give you a nominal rate of interest right which you can at least protect your capital so these are investment for a very short period of time they are issued at discount and ready made par so issued at discount means suppose there is a 1000 treasury bills it will be issued at say 960 970 rupees and at the time of payment they will give you 1000 rupees so on an average you get, calculate what is the interest that you will be getting by that investment they are highly liquid and risk free since they are being issued by the government of india rbi we call it they are risk free asset and they are highly liquid if if suppose i have i had invested keeping in mind that after 6 months i will sell it because by the time i'll make able to decide my house decision where i'll buying my home right residential property but after one month i i i was since i was looking for a house and i <clears throat> i find a house which is worth uh, buying so i take a decision so what i can do is i'll i can dispose of in the market so this, this is called highly liquid any time you can sell it and you can get your money so that's why we say these are highly liquid they are issued in the form of promissory note that is government of india that is rbi promise to pay so it is a promissory note which promises to pay such and such sum of money after such and such period of time they are also known as zero coupon bond or risk free assets i want this the other category of the securities of which you invest is and which is very popular which is becoming more and more popular in india is called mutual funds see there are two ways of investing friends other is called one is called direct investing the other is called indirect investing when i talk of direct investing it means in terms of equity i am referring to that i am directly buying shares from the stock market and keeping it in my depository account and then I'll, whenever i like it i'll sell it this is called direct investment indirect investment means since i do not have the requisite expertise to select a share or i do not have the time and energy to devote time to make a research on which equity which company is performing well and then taking a wise this is a mode of investment what i can do is that i can i can go for a mutual fund route that is a indirect form of investing so in the mutual fund which is a what will mutual fund will do mutual fund is a pool of re- resources which a fund house which we also call it asset management company collects from different investors lakhs and lakhs of investor do invest in a particular scheme it may be the, there is no number is fixed but but i can say a very large number of investor do pool their resources and hand over this money to some experts who are considered to be experts of different investments and there are different type of assets for which the mutual funds are it is all together a different subject and we have discussed in past also while talking about the investment management in fundamental of investment subject that a pool of money is being uh, 
created and some mutual fund house that as asset management company do invest this and each of the unit like share each a small portion of the capital of the company is called share similarly one unit means the mutual funds issues in terms of units that is a rupee a 10 rupee may be considered as one unit if you invest 10 rupee you will buy one unit so in the original offer the company issues say if if the company wants to issue the particular scheme so people do invest in the units of that mutual fund house and on the basis of the pool that they create they invest in the equity market or the debt market or the gold whatever the purpose for which you have given them money so it is an indirect form of investment where the experts where the investment experts do invest in that in one asset class or different combination of different asset class depending on the objective of that mutual fund and they cannot belie that whatever they have promised that if they, there are certain schemes which are purely for equity there are certain schemes which are purely for debt there are certain schemes which are called hybrid schemes which are combination of equity and debt so at the time of issue of those units they will have to declare that where they will invest or say sub, if I talk of the hybrid what percentage maximally they will invest in equity and what percentage they will invest in debt they can make a balance of it means the variation with which the asset class the investment in asset class can vary that has to be give, declared in advance while coming out with a policy scheme particular so mutual fund is a good form of indirect investing in different asset class right small investors especially who's, uh, who who, have, who do not have the requisite expertise of the capital market or who do not have expertise of investment they can opt for the mutual fund unit right and these mutual funds if the companies in which the mutual fund house has invested if the companies performs well the price of those shares goes up then the net asset value of unit price the normally the price at which the shares are being sold we can say the price of the share so the unit has its own value which is called net assets value as the price of the shares increases the net asset value of the company units of the mutual fund scheme also increases so when you dispose it off certainly you get profit out of it if the value of that units increases again like equity this mutual fund is also element of risk because it depends on the asset class in which the mutual fund has invested if you are buying a debt mutual fund right normally the degree of risk is less if you are as compared to the mutual fund of the scheme of equity right so this is about mutual fund and this be re- becoming very popular the other form of investment is called derivatives world over in the stock market the quantum of transaction that takes place in the derivative market is many times larger than the quantum of trading or quantum of turnover that takes place in form of the real exchange of buying of asset that is if I talk in the stock market the shares so derivative are in financial instruments whose value depends on the value of some underlying assets like the index of the BSC which is called Sensex you have a derivative of Sensex itself right so if the Sensex increases the derivative value of the of the Sensex will also increase if the Sensex decreases the derivative value of the Sensex will decrease so d- derivatives in instruments which where the value of the asset is depends on the value of underlying asset if I am bu- buying a gold derivative so the value of that gold derivative depends on the value of the gold I don't buy gold in physical form I am buying derivative of gold right so derivative is an instrument where it depends on the value of it may be a derivative of commodities it may be of oil it may be of any commodity in which the government of India or for that matter stock exchange of that country allows to deal with so a derivative does not have any physical existence but emerges out of a contract between two parties right so it is it is not physical transfer of asset like gold real estate or any um, 
thing as a financial asset take place. So, it is merely a contract between the two parties and if the value of underlying asset increase the person who if I buy a particular derivative right if the value of that company increases the value of my derivative also will increase and I will I'll make profit out of it. So, it does not have any value of its own but its value depends on the value of the underlying asset physical assets which is called underlying assets. The underlying assets may be shares, debentures, tangible commodities, currencies, short term, long term financial securities right. So, these are all different asset classes in which the derivative is quite popular. The stock index future and stock index option. So, two very popular form of derivative is called future and options. The other is called ETFs. ETFs are again very becoming popular. It is a basket of securities collection of group of securities. So, ETFs are the collection of group of stocks that are traded on an exchange like individual stock. Suppose I want to invest in the stock market directly and I am confused I am which company to buy the, the share of which company to buy I am not able to decide or share or shares of different companies to buy what is the different companies I want to what I can do is I can buy in ETFs. Sensex ETF, Nifty ETF of NSC. If I want to in small in, invest in small companies, right? So there is a ETF of small companies of the NSC and the BSC both. So what I'll do? I'm not buying one company. I'm buying a basket of different companies, and the combination of basket of these companies is called ETF, right? So they help to measure the performance of the overall market or a smaller subset of market. The first ETF in India which is called popularly known as Nifty Bs, right. So, Nifty Benchmark Exchange Traded Scheme based on asset PCNX Nifty launched in 2002. Other form of investment which is very popular form of investment traditionally in India is called real estate investment. Means investment in um, commercial property, commercial investment in the residential property. But one thing that is there in the real estate investment is it requires not a small amount normally. Now, the property prices have gone up over a period of time, land is scarce in India, right. So, it requires substantial amount of money to make investments. So, that is why many people are not able to invest in the real estate on a monthly basis, unlike in the mutual funds, unlike in the equity, even if you have 500 rupees, you can make a monthly SIP in a mutual fund scheme, right. So, but unlike in this, unlike in the equity mutual fund, if you want to buy a real estate, I mean many many in India I am just generalizing it at least you require 40, 50, 60 lakh rupees to make real investment and, and the transaction cost is quite heavy, but the return which you get is in form of rent, in form of capital appreciation. Suppose I buy a residential property right apart from my own home which I'm in which I am living, I buy an extra house, extra um, plat I can say right residential property and I let it out. So, I will get a rental income, monthly income and over a period of time if the price of that flat increases, I will get the capital gain in form of capital appreciation. If I buy a flat in Delhi, say in a city like Delhi on any metropolitan 1.5 crore and after 4 years it becomes 2 crore, so I will make a capital appreciation of 50 lakh rupees. So, these are the some of the investments, real estate investments I have talked about uh, and other investments I will be talking in my next lecture. Thank you very much.